Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and today Google released the first beta of Android 14 and in this video I'm going to show you each and every new change so without further ado let's jump in. So let's start with the build number and here on the 7 Pro it's UPB1.230309.014. Right off the bat, let me tell you that this build includes the same exact features we saw in developer preview 1 and 2, in addition to some minor tweaks. So what I will do is, I will show you these new minor tweaks when compared to DP2, and then the second section of this video will compare everything new in this build to the stable version of Android 13, in case you missed my previous videos. So let's start with the features added when compared to developer preview 2 and the first one is under settings and then display lock screen and you will find here a new toggle called show weather. It says here see current weather conditions and when I turn off the switch it doesn't actually do anything. When I go to my home screen I still see the weather info over here so it, it seems to be buggy for now but maybe in the future it will work successfully. The second change is under settings and then passwords and accounts. I took a screenshot and now we have a new toggle called Google Password Manager which is off by default. After turning on the switch I didn't notice anything different so if you know already what it does please let me know in the comments below. The third change is located under settings and then system and then developer options and when you scroll down a bit you will see a new toggle here called the transparent navigation bar. The description says make navigation bar background color transparent by default. I thought at first it will work with each and every app but an app like Facebook still shows the black bar at the bottom of the screen. However, I noticed some other apps responded to the change and it shows a transparent navigation bar like Google native apps. So maybe the app developers need to update their apps for this option to work. So that's everything new added since developer preview 2. Now let's compare it to the stable version. So here I have the Pixel 7 Pro running Android 14 beta 1 and its younger brother the Pixel 5 running Android 13 with April update. Let's start with the home screen and you will notice a bigger gap between the dock and the first row of apps. The second change is in the folders. Now they are using a bigger font and also the folder will cover everything underneath it instead of being shifted towards the top like before. Unfortunately, the wallpaper and the style app is completely broken in Android 14 beta 1 and as you see, it keeps crashing. I tried all the troubleshooting steps like restarting the phone, clearing the cache and the storage of this app but unfortunately it doesn't work so I'm not going to be able to tell you if there is anything new or not in this build. Moving to the recent apps screen and it got only one change. When you tap on the app icon as you see the split top option is now called the split screen and it got a new icon as well. And now let's move to the notification shade and the quick settings. The first difference here when you do the first swipe the battery percentage will remain in Android 14 beta 1 instead of showing you the estimated time like before. And if you want to get the estimated time on Android 14, you need to do the second swipe. When it comes to the home controls, you will see multiple differences. First, everything is now shifted towards the top and the controls have narrower space when compared to the stable version. And when you tap on the more button, you will see different options. From here on Android 14, you can open the Google Home app if you want and it will take you there right away, which is not the case in the stable version. And also the add controls option has been removed and now we only have edit controls which will allow you to do pretty much the same thing. You can add controls and reorder them if you want so there is no need to have two separate options for doing the same thing. The battery saver tile will now show you what kind of battery saver option you have activated under settings. In this case it says standard instead of only on or off like before. Moving to the media controls and it got a lot of changes. The first one is the new animation you get when you interact with all the buttons of the media card like what you see here which is not the case on the stable version and also when you stop interacting it will keep animating for a few seconds and then stops on its own. The media output switcher also got multiple tweaks. First when you move the slider you will see the volume percentage and when you move it all the way to 0% it will not go towards the edge but instead it will show you a speaker icon with a cross. When you compare this to the stable version there is no uh, volume percentage and it will not tell you if the sound is muted or not. You will also notice that anything else other than your phone is now listed under speakers and displays which wasn't the case before. Now let me show you some random tweaks before moving to the settings. Starting with the volume controls you will notice here that the sound profiles now has a speaker icon instead of using the ring icon like before. 
In the sound and vibration card, you will see two separate sliders, one for the ring volume and one for the notification volume instead of having both together in one slider. And also when you tap on done, it will slide to the side instead of sliding to the bottom like before. In Android 14, now you have the ability to give partial access to your photos and videos in third party apps. So let's take Facebook as an example. And when I tap on allow on both, as you see here, we have only two options. While here we have the ability to select specific photos and videos, and when you tap on this option, as you see, it will show you all the photos. And if you want to choose a specific album, you still have the option to do this. The share sheet also got a small tweak. Now the nearby and the edit buttons are borderless with bigger icons. And when it comes to the system navigation, you will notice two things. First, we have a new back arrow with a fill color around it and bolder font. And it will also give you a quick glimpse at the page you are heading to before releasing your finger, which is not the case with the stable version, even though both have the feature activated. Now let's talk about the differences under settings, and that's where you will find most of the changes. The first one, when you tap on any of the menu items, the highlight now has more rounded corners. And when you go to network and the internet and then tap on Sims and choose your network provider, you will notice a totally new version for the carrier settings version. And that allowed the 5G to work on my 7 Pro here in the UE. So if the 5G is restricted in your country, you can give it a try after installing Android 14. Under apps and then a special app access, you will find a new option here called long background tasks that doesn't exist on the stable version. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but maybe we will know in the future. Under notifications, and then scroll down a little bit, you will see a whole new menu called the flash notifications that will allow you to flash the screen or the flashlight at the back of your phone when you get a notification. And when, and when you turn on the switch, you have the ability also to choose what color you want your screen to flash. And after finishing, you can tap on preview. It will show you how it looks. Next, under battery, we have a lot of new changes starting with battery usage. The first thing you will see is the screen on time in a much bigger font instead of being hidden under system usage like before. Also, the apps and system usage are no longer categorized in this way, but now you have a filter to switch between them in Android 14, which is much easier in my opinion. And the battery saver page got a complete revamp. First, you will see two radio buttons, one for the standard battery saver and one for extreme. And instead of having a separate page for the extreme battery saver, and then tap on when to use to choose your preference. But now you can simply tap on any of them to choose your preference, which is much easier and less complicated. And from the front page directly, you can tap on the gear icon to choose what apps you want to keep running instead of going first into Extreme Battery Saver and then tap on Essential Apps. Going back to the Battery Saver page and you will also see some other menus. For example, Set a Schedule is now called Schedule and Reminders and it includes more options. For example, you can turn on based on battery level and then it will show you the slider to choose this and also you can turn off at 90%, which is a separate toggle in the stable version. Then you have battery saver reminders, and that means if you don't want to get reminded about activating your battery saver, you can turn off the switch, which wasn't the case before. Also under the same page, you will notice here that the adaptive battery option is now located under battery saver, and instead of being under adaptive preferences in the stable version, but if you go now to adaptive preferences, you will only find adaptive charging. So this is how it looks now in Android 14. But other than this, they are exactly the same. And under display, there is a small tweak, which is the ability to access the system navigation menu and instead of going to system and then gestures like on the stable version. Next, under security and the privacy, there are a lot of changes. First, the expandable menus are no longer showing here in the newer version and also there are some naming changes. For example, the Google security checkup is now called accounts security and find my device is now called device finders and the updates menu is now called system and updates. On top of this, when you tap on any of the options, it will first show you a graphical representation for the feature and then an option that will allow you to take the same action like the stable version. Also, there is a button here at the top of each page that will take you back to the first page of the security and the privacy settings and instead of using the back gesture like before. So let me show you some more examples here like find my device and device finders. This is the difference in the way it looks and also the system and the updates will show you the two exact options like the stable version but without the need to expand the menu. 
And when you scroll all the way down, you will see that the more security settings and the more privacy settings are now consolidated together under one page called more settings. I didn't see here anything different. They are exactly the same options you will get under those two menus. And the last page I'm going to talk about is system. The first change is the separate navigation mode menu item that takes you right away to the system navigation and instead of going to gestures first and then system navigation. The second change is under language and input. Here on Android 14 beta 1, you will see regional preferences. And from here, you can choose your temperature unit. You can choose the first day of the week and then the numbers of preferences. And this will apply to all your apps and instead of adjusting it in each and every app separately. And lastly, under the reset options, you will find some tweaks. So for example, now you can reset the mobile network settings separately from the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and instead of having all of them grouped together and that will make it easier for you. Also, the Erase Downloaded Sims has been renamed to Erase eSims. And the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the performance and the stability. I don't recommend installing this build on your daily driver just yet because the wallpaper and the style app doesn't work. Also, the animations are very laggy sometimes and the phone do some weird things. The phone is also warmer than expected in my case. So I don't recommend installing it now. And usually beta 3 is stable and good enough to install on your daily driver. So I recommend to wait for beta 3 and then try Android 14. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I found in the first beta of Android 14. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.